There were such a lot of toys in the children's playroom. The table had become a favorite gathering place. There were several groups, each toy naturally falling into his own. There were the rough toys, Bamboo Bear, Chicken, and Sailor Jack, who had been in the wars. Katya, Dolly, Eugene, and the zoo animals. Clowny Man, and the transports. Bill, the iron horse, and Terence. And then there was Nokio, faithful servant to Mr. and Mrs. Hawthorne and their lovely daughter Genevieve. But standing above them all was the Money Pig. Nobody really knew if Money Pig was his real name, but it certainly was descriptive, and so it stuck. Now Money Pig had been collecting coins for quite a long time. In fact, he was crammed so full that he could no longer rattle. And a Money Pig can't rise any higher than that. There he sat, looking down on everything in the room. He knew very well that with what he had in his stomach, he could easily buy up the whole place. That's what you call having self-assurance. Today's topic at tea was a common theme among the Hawthorns. <sighs> this afternoon has been quite long and tedious, remarked Mrs. Hawthorne. Genevieve agreed and looked to her father to redeem the situation. Perhaps we should arrange for a bit of entertainment, suggested Mrs. Hawthorne. Yes, that would be quite enjoyable, said Genevieve. <laughs> Mr. Hawthorne quickly agreed and set about to put the plans into motion. Mr. Hawthorne was afraid the money pig might be too high up to hear about the performance by word of mouth. So Clowny Man and the zoo animals set about to make a special invitation. Money Pig did not answer whether he was coming or not. If he was to join in, the toys knew it must be from his own place. They could arrange that, and they did. Everyone was excited about the performance. They all took their seats and were requested to make whatever sounds they could to show their enjoyment. First up was Bamboo Bear and his lovely assistant, Chicken.
They certainly do have large families, don't they? Mr. Hawthorne remarked. Shh! Our daughter is coming up next, snapped Mrs. Hawthorne. The money pig was so thrilled with the performance that he began to daydream about his favorite subject, his own public funeral. He often thought about who to include in his will and grew giddy with excitement when he imagined the grand spectacle of his memorial. And when would that be? It always comes before it's expected. Poor piggy. Poor piggy. Oh. For the fourth act, some circus animals had come in from out of town. Down in front of the chest lay the money pig, now broken into pieces with the coins spilling out. And suddenly, Bill got an idea. Everyone followed suit. Poor Money Pig, left all alone. Indeed, his time had come much sooner than he expected. The next morning, the table was almost empty. Most of the toys had gone traveling with their newfound wealth. The Hawthorns, however, stayed behind. Mr. Hawthorne took it upon himself to watch over Money Pig's former post. But all have their proper place, and soon true order was returned to their world. While the broken bits of the money pig found their way to the dustbin, a new pig was placed on top of the bureau. Not a penny was in it as yet, and so this one couldn't rattle either. It was like the other in this way. Anyhow, it had made a beginning, and with that we will make an end. <laughs>